Spider-Man is a comic book superhero and a character that is so immersed in media, not only does he not need an introduction, but all of you already know all about his origin, his powers, his character, and everything else about him. In fact, he's probably the most well-known superhero there is, next to Batman, of course. And Spider-Man's been in comics since 1962, and he has never left the world since, as something about his character really connects with audiences. And no matter how bad the franchise gets, Spider-Man always sticks around. And believe me, it has gotten bad. We don't really talk about this. But because of Spider-Man's popularity, he will never disappear from media. And over the years, like any good superhero, he has died several times. And so this video is going to look back at the five best deaths of Spider-Man. Number five, the superior Spider-Man. In this story, Otto Octavius, or Doc Ock, is dying. Basically, his body is rotting away after being put through too many super fights over the years. And even though he tries everything he can, he still can't fix his body, and he is going to die. But he decides not to give up, so he can't fix his body. So what? He'll just go get another one. And what better body to get than Spider-Man's? He's a hero in his prime, healthy, and has superpowers. And so Doc Ock conducted several master plan schemes to get his revenge on those who had wronged him. But really, he wasn't doing that at all. You see, each time Spider-Man beat him, he had to use a helmet to link his mind to Doc Ock's Octobots. And Doc Ock had designed it that way, so that he could map Spider-Man's brain. And then Doc Ock switches his mind with Peter Parker's, and takes over his body, and Peter Parker dies inside Doc Ock's body. It's an incredibly dark death, and a lot of fans, myself included, didn't like seeing Peter Parker go out this way. It is different to see the villain win, sure, but it shouldn't have ended like this, as it was just so unfair to Peter Parker. And though Peter tried to switch back minds, he couldn't. He died before he got the chance. But right at the end, Peter wasn't angry about this. Instead, he shared his memories and experiences with Doc Ock, and he taught him how he became a hero, and more importantly, why he became a hero, and why he kept it up. And he told Doc Ock to use his body to become a better hero than Spider-Man ever was. And since Doc Ock can feel Spider-Man's life as though it's his own, he agrees. And so he becomes the superior Spider-Man. Number 4. The Edge of Time The video game, Spider-Man Edge of Time, was a sequel to the Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions game. And it had quite a good story, that focuses on the future Spider-Man of 2099 and the present day Spider-Man. And the game opens with the death of Spider-Man at the hands of Anti-Venom, the Eddie Rock version. Now, when a story starts with the death of the hero, we all know that they're not actually going to die. It's just there to create a sense of drama, and we all know that the hero will find a way to survive. And add to that the fact that this game is all about time travel, and we all know he wasn't going to die, or at least he was going to go back in time and stop this from happening. But in actual fact, Spider-Man did die. The game follows through on the beginning, and has him unable to avoid his fate and die. Now, this would have been quite impressive, if not for the fact that he is then taken to the future, and the future medical tech is able to bring him back to life. Some might say it's a bit of a cop-out, but I actually think it's kind of impressive that they had him die in the first place, and not just go back in time and change it with the time machine. Yes, going forwards in time isn't much better, but it is a little better. And the best bit about this death is that Spider-Man knows he is going to die, and yet he still goes into the fight anyway, because it's the right thing to do and heroes do what is right no matter the situation or the risks involved. And this really shows us Spider-Man's character and his unwavering morals of doing what is right, even if he has to sacrifice himself in the process. Number 3. The Spider-Verse The original Spider-Man in this universe is the one that we're most familiar with. Bitten by a spider, his Uncle Ben died, and he became one of the greatest heroes in the world. We all know the story. And he was what Spider-Man should be, a brave and bold hero who fights his best against supervillains and helps people no matter what. But unfortunately in this case, the Kingpin was able to take him out. Get rid of the body. Now he only appears briefly in this film, but he makes a great impact, especially on Miles Morales. Because Miles only becomes a hero because Spider-Man is gone and the void needs to be filled. And though other Spider-Men from other universes helped train him, I honestly think the one who had the most influence on his life was the one who died. As he showed him what it meant to be a hero, what you had to give and the risks involved. 
and without him dying, then Miles would have never become Spider-Man, as it's not the life that he wanted. So basically, Peter Parker has become Miles Morales' Uncle Ben. As beforehand, Miles didn't want to be a hero, but after the death of Peter Parker, he realises that he has to become a hero. With great power comes great responsibility. So it's a slightly different take on a very familiar story. Which is also why this death works so well, because if it was any other superhero, this wouldn't work. If it was a hero we didn't know who just dies in the first five minutes of the film, no one would really care. But thanks to all the Spider-Man movies, comics and video games, everyone on the planet is familiar with his character, to the point where newer films, such as the Marvel ones, don't even bother telling his origin story, because we all know it at this point. And it's because of this that we can really feel his death in our hearts, even though he's barely in the film. Number 2. The Snap When talking about the death of Spider-Man, Thanos' finger snap has to be mentioned. One of the best superhero movies ever made that sees Spider-Man teaming up with a host of other heroes. He travels with Iron Man and Doctor Strange into deep space and finally to an alien world where he teams up with even more heroes to fight Thanos en masse. And it's a great sequence to watch and must have cost millions to make. And Spider-Man is actually incredibly helpful in this fight, saving lives and even going so far as to be the one who almost gets the gauntlet off of Thanos. But as we all know, Thanos ultimately gets all the Infinity Stones and enacts his plan of wiping out half the universe, because apparently, according to Doctor Strange, it's the only way to defeat him. But sadly, this finger snap sees Spider-Man dissolve into nothing. I don't want to go. I don't want to go, sir. Please. Please, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And it's actually one of the more painful deaths in the film. A lot of others do dissolve, yes, but it's Peter Parker's final words to Tony Stark that make him sound so young, and we remember that he's more of a spider teen than a spider man. And having him risk his life so young and then to lose it like this is just heartbreaking to watch. Of course, with that being said, we all know that Spider-Man will be back soon enough, as he is not only the face of the franchise, but the next Spider-Man film is already being advertised, before Spider-Man himself has even been resurrected in the MCU. Which really lowers the stakes for Infinity War Part 2, as we know 100% that he's coming back. I mean, to be fair, we kind of did already, but seeing him actually advertise another film in a trailer, it's just a little bit tacky. They could have waited a few more months. But even when we take that into account, it's still a great death, and one of the more memorable out of everyone else who died in that film. And without a doubt, it's the death of Spider-Man that audiences are now the most familiar with. And though it may seem a bit simple, as it's just Thanos snapping his fingers, don't forget that that finger snap was a decade in the making. Number 1. Ultimate Spider-Man Now, this is widely considered to be the best Spider-Man death that we've ever seen, and for good reason. In the Ultimate Universe, Spider-Man is still the Peter Parker that we know and love, though he's a little bit younger in this version. But he's a hero with the same powers and pretty much the same past. And in this universe, the Sinister Six have broken out of prison and are coming for Peter Parker. Not Spider-Man, but Peter Parker, as they know who he is and more importantly, where he lives. Now, Peter manages to get Aunt May and Gwen Stacy out of their home and to safety, and then he heads off for the confrontation with the villains. And his end really begins on the way there, when he takes a bullet intended for Captain America. And obviously a bullet wound is the last thing he needs when he has to go fight some of the most powerful supervillains in the world. But he is Spider-Man, and so he manages to work up the strength to stand. Now he can't go to a hospital without giving away his identity, so instead he webs his wounds as closed as possible and gets web-slinging home. He could have obviously gone somewhere else to get patched up, but he desperately needs to get home because he's scared they're going to hurt innocent civilians. And I have to say that doing all of that with a bullet wound takes a willpower made of iron. And then when he arrives home, there is a truly epic showdown, which sees Electro, Sandman, Vulture, Craven, and Norman Osborn versus Spider-Man and the Human Torch and Iceman, who at this point in that universe have been living with Peter Parker. Now you may have noticed I only listed five of the Sinister Six there, and that's because Norman Osborn has killed Dr. Octavius, when the Doc said that he didn't want to waste time killing Spider-Man, he just wanted to get on with his life. But the fight with the Sinister Five still has quite a few eventful moments. But my favourite moment is without a doubt, when Aunt May returns, gun in hand, and guns down Electro. <laughs> ah! 
And she does this because Aunt May is nothing short of awesome. Now this fight is huge, and Spider-Man and the others take out as many as they can, until finally it ends with a one-on-one -on -one fight between Spider-Man and the Green Goblin. And just as the two of them are staring each other down, they are then interrupted by Mary Jane Watson, who is driving a stolen van, and she drives it straight into the Green Goblin, crushing him. Because MJ is pretty awesome too. But the Green Goblin isn't finished yet, and he gets back up, only to be knocked back down by Peter Parker, who lifts and throws a van on top of him with such force that it explodes. And this final feat of strength takes the Green Goblin down, which is good, because it also took everything that Peter Parker had left, and he collapses to the floor and dies from his injuries. And he dies happy, because he is able to save his Aunt May's life. He couldn't save his Uncle Ben, and the guilt of that to find the rest of his life, but this time he does the right thing and he saves his Aunt May, and he is able to die in peace, safe with the knowledge that his mission is complete. It's a very touching end that is actually very well written and thought out, and with Miles Morales taking over the mantle of Spider-Man, it wasn't just a normal, okay they're dead but they'll be resurrected in six months. Instead of this, they actually made a very emotional story about a hero who's willing to sacrifice everything to save those that he loves. And killing off Peter Parker like this for real was a great move to my mind, as it shows us that the stakes on these heroes' lives are real, and these people are truly heroes, as they are willing to give their lives to save others. I do actually like the character of Peter Parker, and I did want him to survive, but I like it even more when writers follow through on their deaths, as I'd rather that a character either stay dead or just never die, rather than have them pop back to life every five minutes. And also, like the Spider-Verse film, Peter Parker's death led to Miles Morales taking over the mantle of Spider-Man, in an attempt to live up to the Peter Parker legacy. And personally, I think having him take over as the new Spider-Man was a fantastic idea, because Miles Morales is actually one of my favourite Marvel characters. And that is Spider-Man's five greatest deaths, though I'm sure we all have different opinions on which one of these deaths was the best. So, which of these deaths was your personal favourite? And are there any other Spider-Man deaths that you think should have been on this list? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mass Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.